Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a highly requested one. You guys have sent me quite a few messages and comments requesting to see how I make my scrunchies, the measurements, things like that. So today I'm going to show you one of the few different sizes that I offer in store. Today we're going to focus on one of my best selling sizes, which is the regular size. If you see, it's got quite a bit of fluff to it quite a bit of scrunch and I like it that way. It really looks nice once worn. So for today's tutorial I'm going to use a beautiful colorful little piece of fabric. This is a beautiful rayon fabric. Let's go ahead and put that scrunchie together. For the purpose of today's video I'm using a rayon. You can pretty much use whatever fabric you happen to like. Just note that depending on the thickness and stiffness of the fabric, the look of your scrunchie at the end will change up a bit. Now, for my regular scrunchies, here's the size that I use. I cut my fabric five inches across and about 28 or so inches in length. Now, you can do this either with the help of a rotary cutter and a cutting mat or a pair of fabric scissors. All of these are Fiskars. If I find a link to them, I'll put them down in the description box below. Depending on the fabric I'm using, sometimes I change up the dimensions of this little piece, just depending on the look that I'm going for. Now, even with sewing my scrunchies, there's a couple of different methods that I use. One that I use on almost all of my scrunchies. This is the burrito method. I find that this gives me the cleanest finish at least with my sewing abilities. So that's what I'm going to show you guys today. Now to sew your scrunchies, you're going to put the right sides together just like so and start off by stitching this short seam first. I like to do a back stitch at the start and at the end just to make sure that the stitching's secure. Once that's done, you'll be left with a piece of fabric that looks like this. You've got the right sides together on the inside. And that's what your seam looks like. The next stage is the actual burrito method. So here's how I like to fold mine up to make sure it stitches well. I'm going to flatten out my seam just using my fingers like this. If you want, you can press them but I find that it does not really get in my way while I'm stitching, it doesn't make a difference to the project. So I just leave it as is. So with the seams flattened, I'm just gonna flip that over, making sure that the seam is nice and flat, both the ends of the seam are nice and flat on the other side. And then you're going to take the top layer and fold that, I'd say in about thirds, you want to do this so that it's as far away from the other ends as possible. Then fold your fabric in half. Make sure that the seams line up well. And you're going to stitch all the way across this long end. And I find at this stage it really is easier if I show you how it's done. So let's go back to the sewing machine and I'll show you how, what I mean. I start off just a little bit before the seam. I always start and finish with a little bit of a back stitch. You want to make sure that while you're stitching, this inner layer is tucked as far away from your edge that you're stitching and stitch all the way across. Now when you come to the end, all you do is grab those inner layers, pull them through,
tuck those inner layers far away from your sewing edge. Line up your fabric and continue sewing till you're almost at the end. Now when you're almost done stitching all the way around, you're going to leave about uh, an opening of about say an inch or enough for you to comfortably flip the fabric inside out as well as put the, the elastic through. off any excess thread now once you're done stitching you're going to end up with a little bit of a tube that looks like this and that's exactly what you're looking for next step is to flip the fabric over so you're going to look for that little opening that you'd left in the in the stitching Grab the tube from the inside and slowly pull it out. And that's what you're left with. Now the next stage is putting your elastic in. This elastic is about 8 inches in length and using a safety pin. Most people will have access to a safety pin, easy access to it. So I'm just going to demonstrate using a safety pin. But for most of my scrunchies, I now use a bodkin. This is a clover bodkin and saves heaps of time, especially if you're making larger sized scrunchies. But since not everyone has a clover bodkin, we're just going to work with a safety pin and the elastic. You're going to look for that opening in the seam and simply insert the safety pin there and thread that through. At this stage you want to make sure that that elastic doesn't twist around so that it stays straight right at the very end as well. And just to make sure that I don't lose the other end, I just use a little clip to hold that down. A clothes peg will also work well. And I'm going to continue threading my elastic. All you're going to do is make sure that you've got both ends of the elastic and I usually stitch my elastic across but if you're using thin elastic like I am, you can also simply tie a knot. And this one is a little easier. So all I'm doing is just going to go across. And we're not going to leave it at one, but I like using about three knots, that way I know that it's not going to come undone. And you're going to make sure that that's nice and tight and secure. Then simply trim off that excess and pull that in. Now your scrunchie is almost done and all you're left with is closing up that final seam. For the final seam, I find that it helps to use a slightly smaller stitch so the stitching is not too visible. You'll have to play around with the settings on your sewing machine to make sure you're getting the best finish. Now 
Now you just want to adjust the fabric so that your scrunchie looks nice and pretty. And there you have it. A gorgeous scrunchie now ready to be used. So guys, once you've finished stitching it up, this is what you're left with. It's a nice fluffy scrunchie. That's my regular scrunchie and that's how I put these together. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with those who you think might find this tutorial interesting. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you really soon in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.